the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, I'd like to welcome you to the 54th day of this conference. It is finished. So like I was saying yesterday, that is why we we got to stick to prayer. And when you pray, you should know that your prayers cannot get to the Father except it is processed through the office of the Christ. The same way God's response cannot come to you until it is processed through the office of Christ. That is why Jesus will say, no one can get to the Father except through me. If the Father should speak directly to you, the implications will be that you are no longer in this world because the energy with which that voice would transmit will be like thunder and fire and it might destroy you. But if it goes through the crucible of the office of Christ and it is processed, then the vibration is precipitated into your spirit through the infrastructure of the Holy Spirit. So when you pray, spirits do not understand this your language. I thought you should know. The language you are speaking, spirit don't understand it. Revelation chapter 5 verse 8 says, When he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp and gold bowls filled with incense which are the prayers of the saints the gold bowls filled with incense are the prayers of the saint so by the time your prayers get to heaven your prayers takes another form like incense because through the office of christ it is processed so that the immortals can relate to your prayer so take note that the prayers of the saints is now incense in golden bowls and the prayers of the saints ascends like incense into the sanctuary in, in a way that the immortals can relate to in, in this case your your words are transformed into incense so so you think it is that grammar you are speaking or you think it is that proverbs or why saying that you are quoting the god is he not that i am this i am that no 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 no, no. that's not the point you, you you remember the prayer of the the the, 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 the Republican and the tax collector. It, it is not what you say. Yeah. It's more than that. What you say is important in certain jurisdictions, but it, it is more than that. Your prayer was captured by the immortals in your spirit. Like an incense. Before you even open your mouth to pray, you should know. So most of you, your prayers have been answered without you knowing because of the things that were captured in your spirit. Your prayer was captured by the immortals in your spirit like an incense before you could even open your mouth to pray. Has it ever happened to you before that you wake up one morning and you've not even opened your mouth? In your heart, you are like, hey God, today, hmm, if somebody should send me some money, it will do me a lot of good though. And before you realize, by 12 midday, there is an alert on your phone. Your prayer was captured by the immortals in your spirit like incense before you even open your mouth to pray. That is why Jesus said, when you have faith as big as, he didn't say when you utter words, when you pray, when you, when, 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 when you, you speak loud. He said, when you have faith, faith is a thing of the spirit. Uh-huh. So when you have faith, whatever you believe in will come to pass because it is captured by the immortals in your spirit. Whether it is positive or negative, whatever you believe in is captured in your spirit first before you even begin to speak. So most of you have said a lot of negative things in your spirit before you are now saying positive things. It was captured in your spirit by the immortals. You should know. So when your prayer was yet an incense when it was yet a desire when it was still a belief at the level of faith before you could put words to it it was captured in your spirit by the immortals that is why you have to be very careful 
about what you desire. You have to be very careful about what you believe. Believe. You have to be very careful about that. Because the immortals always capture that praise from your spirit. And Job said, the very thing I feared came down upon me. Whatever you fear and believe in your spirit will come down upon you like spades. Because the immortals will capture it in your spirit. That is the most powerful form of prayer. So be careful the things you believe in your spirit. Be careful the things you believe in your heart. Be careful. Be careful. They will come to pass. Be careful. When it was a desire in your spirit and mind, the immortals captured it. And they gave it expression. And it was in that form that it was captured, not in what you said. So if you believe in your heart that you are going to have an accident, and you are now saying with your mouth, what you believe in your heart was captured by the immortals. The prayer starts from your belief system. What do you believe? Your belief system. That's where the prayer starts from. Like an incense is captured in your spirit. So listen. Listen. In your walk with God, you can get to a point where it feels like you are wasting. Yeah. In your walk with God, you can get to a point where you feel like you are wasting. But you should know that as long as the earth remains, you will be given the keys of heaven. Therefore, you must operate not on the basis of other men or other women or what family says or what society or culture says. You must not operate on those bases, but you must operate on the basis of what God has said that has created a new set of possibilities for you. Because it is out of the waste, it is out of the ashes of your dying that a new day breaks forth. And, and in that day of destiny, you are given a spirit of the judge to overturn the beast of recklessness and wickedness that are trying to waste your territory. So hear the spirit of the living God blasting through my voice to you, wherever you are listening to me. Your many years of waiting and wasting has been taken into account and a new set of heralds are about to awake and, and arise and, and the tide will shift so bad. There will be a paradigm shift, complete paradigm shift. You won't be able to recognize your past in comparison to your present and to your future. Yeah, That's the voice of the Lord speaking through my voice. It's a prophecy. Your many years of waiting and wasting has been taken into account and a new set of heralds are about to awake and arise and the tide the tide will shift there will be a complete paradigm shift it will be so bad that you don't recognize your past in comparison to your present and to your future and people will be amazed at what the hand of the lord has wrought in your life oh yes we, we know mm, we know we know that there are mantles that are held up by spiritual wickedness in heavenly places that are responsible for the level of demonic invasion that we have experienced or experiencing and, and even though it may be an all-time high invasion we are rising we are rising we are rising we are rising waiting men and women are rising wasting men and women are rising what does scripture say in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 30 to 31 even youths who grow tired and weary because they are trying to do it by their strength they will grow weary and tired and young men will stumble and fall because they don't have the law to direct their path but those of us who hope in the lord and continue to cast our bread on the waters continue to sow in the spirit we will renew our strength we will soar on wings like eagles we we will run and not grow weary we will walk and not be faint so we are rising say we are rising we are rising we are rising and the Lord is making a statement through the preacher. Cast thy bread upon the water through the many days, the many cycles, and you will find it. I know somebody told you you are wasting. I know somebody told you you, you got to get up and do something about this. I, I know you may look like a mockery. Like maybe you have been praying for only God knows how long. Maybe you've been going through terrible times and, and, and you are sad and you, you feel like God has abandoned you. But, but look at men like Simeon and Anna. They knew better. They knew better. Scripture says in Luke chapter 2 verse 22 to 38. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord that 
every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. And they went to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem, he was called Simeon. Simeon was righteous and devout. And Simeon was casting bread on water for only God knows how long. He, he was waiting for the consolation of Israel and, and we are told that the Holy Spirit was upon him and it was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die unless he had seen the Messiah. And, and moved by the Spirit, he, he went to the temple courts and, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what a custom of the law required, Simon took him in his arms and he praised God saying, Oh, at last, Almighty Father, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, I may now die, may your servant be dismissed in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the sight for all nations, a, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and glory of your people Israel. Simon was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He was, he was casting, he was, he, was, he was casting his bread on the water. He was, he was waiting, he was waiting, he was waiting because he knew that when you are sowing in the spirit, it is not about your timeline. It is about God's schedule and God's own timeline. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He was waiting. Some of you are tired of waiting already. Simon was waiting. He was waiting. He was waiting. He was waiting. And moved by the Spirit of the Lord, he went to the temple court. And after many days, he found it. He found it. What about Anna? Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. We are told that she was very old. And she had lived with her husband for only seven years. So let's take it that she got married at 20 because those days they, they got married very early. So she enjoyed married life for only seven years. So let's take it 27. She was now 84. So for 50 something years, scripture says she never left the temple. She never left the temple. She never left the temple. She worshiped day and night, fasting and praying. She was waiting. Because she knew that when you are sowing in the spirit, when you are sowing in the spirit, it is not about your timeline, it's about God's timeline. And I thought you should know that as this conference is coming to an end, you should know that it's not about your timeline. Yours is to keep casting the bread on the waters. Yours is to keep waiting. And we are told that she never left the temple but worship day and night. Some of you, you are already discouraged. You want to leave the temple. You want to leave the temple. The word of the Lord says, I should tell you, don't leave the temple. Do not leave the temple. So, coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and she spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. That's why we got to stick to prayer. We got to stick to prayer because it is out of the waste, out of the ashes of your dying, that a new day breaks forth. And in that day of destiny which has come, you are given the spirit of the judge to overturn the beasts of reckless wickedness that are trying to waste your territory. Stay there. Stay with the Lord. That's the word of the Lord to you. Stay with the Lord. Have a prayerful day. Shalom. And God bless you.